Hello, welcome to today's presentation, Shingles, What You Need to Know About Prevention and Treatment, presented by Dr. Megan Alexander, Internal Medicine with Washington Health Medical Group. Dr. Alexander is a compassionate and skilled board-certified internal medicine physician with extensive training and experience in patient-centered care. She completed her medical education at Government Medical College, Calicut, India, and pursued her internal medicine residency at the University of Nevada, Reno School of Medicine. Dr. Alexander's clinical expertise includes managing a wide range of primary care patients, both in person and through telemedicine, addressing multiple comorbidities, and conducting comprehensive health screenings. In addition, Dr. Alexander has a strong foundation in interdisciplinary care and management of chronic medical conditions, including diabetes, hypertension, and thyroid disorders, among others. Dr. Alexander's hobbies include astronomy, watching movies, and traveling. Please welcome Dr. Alexander. Thank you for the introduction. Welcome everyone for today's session on shingles. I'm Dr. Megan Alexander, board certified internal medicine physician with Washington Health. So the agenda for today's session, including understanding the disease, what is shingles, common symptoms associated, complications of shingles, how to treat it and how to prevent it. Starting with what is shingles. Shingles or herpes zoster is a painful blistering rash that's caused by reactivation of varicella zoster virus, which is the same virus that causes chickenpox. In short, the primary infection caused by varicella zoster virus is chickenpox, and after chickenpox, the virus stays dormant in nerve cells and can reactivate years later as shingles. In the US, herpes zoster occurs in more than 1.2 million individuals annually, causing substantial morbidity. CDC estimates that approximately 30% of persons in the United States will experience herpes zoster during their lifetime. So coming to who is at risk, so like I mentioned, it's a reactivation of chicken pox virus. So anyone who has had chicken pox is at risk, but it is more common in people over the age of 50 or those with weakened immune systems. Because with aging, your immune, immunity wanes over time. So stress, illness, and aging increases the risk. Common symptoms associated with shingles. Common symptoms are rash and pain. Rash develops red patches with fluid-filled blisters, which can later ulcerate as well. It usually occurs on one side of the body. Another co most common symptom is pain, usually manifested as burning sensation, throbbing or stabbing sensation in the affected area. 75% of patients Pain proceeds rash in the affected area. Other symptoms include fever, headache, fatigue. Post-herpetic neuralgia is a common complication of herpes, uh, where significant pain persists for more than 90 days after the onset of rash. Is shingles contagious? This is a tricky question. In a way, it is yes. But you cannot uh, catch shingles from another shingles infection, another person infected with shingles. Like I already mentioned, shingles is a reactivation of virus. So if you never had chicken pox or the chicken pox vaccine, you can get chicken pox from someone who has shingles. This can happen after direct skin to skin contact with a shingles blister or rarely by breathing in the varicella softer virus through the air from the blisters. So for this reason, if you have never had chicken pox or the vaccine to prevent it, you should generally avoid being near anyone with the shingles rash. Lesions are considered infectious until they have crusted. Complications. Most common complication is post-herpetic neuralgia, which is the long-term nerve pain persisting for more than 90 days from the onset of rash. Skin infection can happen in a section of patients where the shingles rash can become infected with bacteria, which can delay healing. Rare other complications include vision loss. If shingles rash occur near the eye, it can cause hearing problems if shingle rash occur in the ear. In immunocompromised patients, you can have pneumonia, brain inflammation, etc. Diagnosis. It's basically clinical diagnosis that is based on symptoms and appearance of the rash. 
lab tests are rarely re needed for the diagnosis of shingles. Coming to treatment of shingles, treatment of shingles mainly include antiviral medications and pain relief. Antiviral medications commonly used medications include acyclovir, valacyclovir or famcyclovir. It's most effective if it started 72 hours of rash onset and typical duration of treatment is 7 to 10 days. The goal of treatment with antiviral medication include hasten the healing process and to decrease the complication and severity of rash. Pain relief is mainly through over-the-counter painkiller medications like ibuprofen, naproxen, Tylenol. Early treatment reduces severity and risk of complications. Coming to indications for antiviral therapy. So whom should be treated? For patients who present within 72 hours of symptom onset, and have uncrusted lesions, we recommend antiviral therapy. It's also recommended for certain patients who present beyond the 72 hour symptom period. This include immunocompromised patients, patients above the age of 65 years, patients still having new crops of lesions, or patients having rashes in and around the eyes. So basically, any patient at risk of complication can get antiviral therapy even beyond 72 hours of symptom onset. Coming to the pain management of herpes zoster, so like I already mentioned, the common pain management include non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs or Tylenol, which you will get over the counter, but certain patients experience severe pain despite these medications. In such cases, opioid analgesics, corticosteroids may be indicated. If you develop secondary bacterial infection, uh, you should get an appropriate antibiotic regimen for the treatment of infection. Post-herpetic neuralgia, which is a common complication of herpes zoster infection, is usually treated with tricyclic antidepressant medications like nortriptyline, amitriptyline, or gabapentin or pregabalin or lidocaine patches, capsaicin, spinal epidural glucocorticoid injections or nerve blocks are considered in selected cases. Prevention. Prevention is mainly through vaccination. The vaccination currently used in US is recombinant shingles vaccination or recombinant zoster vaccination which is the Shingrix vaccination. It was approved for use in the United States in 2017. Previously, live vaccination was used for shingles prevention. It is no longer recommended now. So who should get vaccinated? It is recommended for adults over the age of 50 since aging increases the risk of infection. So vaccination reduces the risk of developing herpes zoster and complications. It is also recommended for patients above the age of 18 years of age if they have a history of immunocompromised medical condition or if they are planning to receive immunosuppressive therapy in the near future. So two dose recombinant vaccine is recommended also for patients who already received the zoster live vaccine. So it's recommended that the first dose of recombinant vaccine be given at least eight weeks after the zoster live vaccine. Coming to dosing and administration, the recombinant shingles vaccination is administered as two doses. The second dose is two to six months after the first dose. If there is a delay in administering the second dose, that means that you haven't received your second dose in six months, the second dose may be administered at any time the series does not need to be restarted. But if you have received the second dose sooner, for example, less than four weeks after the first, the second dose should be repeated at least four weeks after the dose given too early. Coming to some of the common questions people have related to vaccination side effects, timing of vaccination if you had a previous infection. So vaccination side effects, it can cause temporary side effects like sore arm, you can get redness or swelling in the area. You can experience fatigue, muscle pain, headache, fever, etc. Usually these symptoms, uh, even though it is unpleasant, they typically do not last more than two or three days. So if you have persistent symptoms or any significant symptoms, you should follow up with your provider. 
So, should you get vaccinated if you already had a shingles infection? Yes. So, prior infection with shingles is not an exclusion for vaccination. We typically delay vaccination for approximately one year after the herpes zoster infection. When can you return to work? So, if the rash is on your face, it's recommended to wait until the area has completely crusted, which generally takes seven to 10 days. If the rash is in an area that you can cover, example, uh, with clothing or gauze bandage, you may return to work once you feel well. But again, always follow up with your provider whether it's appropriate to return to work. So key takeaways from today's session, shingles is a common infection. It is caused by reactivation of an already existing virus, which is the varicella zoster virus or chickenpox virus. Increasing age increases the risk of infection, but vaccines and early treatment can greatly reduce risk and complications. If you suspect shingles, or if you have rash near your eyes, or if you have a weakened immune system, make sure you seek medical help promptly. And last but not the least, healthy lifestyle, since illness, stress, everything can provoke shingles, managing healthy lifestyle, eating well, managing stress, exercise, and all help in assisting with preventing shingles. That's all for today. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Alexander. We have a few questions. The first question is, do I need to get a shingles vaccine if I already had a chickenpox vaccine? Yes, you need to get shingles vaccination if you already had, a, even if you already had a chickenpox vaccination, because both vaccinations are designed for different spectrum of disease. The chickenpox vaccination is a live vaccination that prevents from varicella or chickenpox whereas the shingles vaccination is a recombinant vaccination that prevents the reactivation of virus. Thank you. The second question is, can you get shingles more than once in your lifetime? Yes, that is possible, but it's not common, but still recurrences might, uh, can happen. Since it's not a common thing, it's always recommended to follow up with a provider to make sure that your diagnosis is correct. Thank you. This concludes our program. Thank you, Dr. Alexander, for this insightful presentation. And thank you, viewers, for tuning in. The entire broadcast of today's presentation will be available on our Facebook page and YouTube.